Hi, how are you doing today? I'm your host, Richard D'Souza, here with the Rich TV Live podcast with my special guest, the CEO of Secure Private Data, CEO Alon Giai. How are you doing today, Alon? Hi, Richard. Doing great, and I hope everybody out there is doing well as well. Great to see you on the show today. And we noticed you signed a distribution agreement with a distributor in Jordan. Can you elaborate on this and what you expect from them for 2024? Yeah, that's a great question. We did sign a distribution agreement. This is through a referral uh, partner company that we have in Qatar for the last few years. We've really been trying a lot to get into that region. And we also signed one in Morocco and some countries, it'll take a long time and some they'll be more active right away. So our partner has already identified uh, several telecom company. This is for Jordan and Iraq. There's a telco called uh, Asia Cell, and uh, obviously, you know, that whole region is prone to conflict and hacking and things like that. So that's very in demand. Uh, big banks and other partnerships. So right now, they're identifying the partnerships, the targets. And as we roll out our new uh, enterprise solution, we just rolled part of it and it's going to go in phases until March. We are deploying those. So that's the kind of stuff that they like. So it's going very well because they've been acting uh, quite fast. So we expect, you got to manage your expectations. Uh, we expect to have sales in the next six months from there. If they come before, that's great. But you have to look at yearly targets with those regions because things take longer but the advantage is that now we have three telecom operators that we are discussing with through our partner and the product is being introduced to them so chances are we'll get something that's fantastic and as we approach the year end have you achieved the tasks you set out to complete for 2023 and what is your roadmap for 2024 uh yes we we do feel we have achieved the goal for 2023 was to lower our budget which we have done uh, lower the acquisition cost what we call cac the customer acquisition cost to 75 dollar us we have lowered that to as low as 25 in some cases um and that's for the digital marketing we have basically by by now by the end of the year we have shelved uh 95 percent of these legacy marketing things that we had and we're looking at a much leaner year in terms of expense next year so we also have an increased sales even though we reduce digital marketing by 75 percent so we're basically primed for 2024 to have a, a proper digital marketing campaign search engine optimization that's already on the way we have close to 50 ads that we are deploying over time on Meta and Google ads. And we have our product range. We also decided to finish our VPN product, which we did in April. Uh, we decided to do an enterprise launch, which we are doing. So we've done above and beyond our target for this year. For 2024, the goal is to reduce the budget by another 40% to in the neighborhood of two to $2.3 million. And we expect much higher sales. I can't make projections on a video here, but definitely much higher than what we had. And we are targeting direct sales to small, medium businesses. There is a huge amount of hacking, especially in the US business email compromise is a huge one. We have several B2B partnership and enterprise partnership anywhere from Saudi Arabia to the US. So it's going to be an exciting year and we're looking uh, forward to focus mostly on sale as opposed to heavy development, which the last few years have been. And uh, essentially we are trying to target profitability by the end of next year. Fantastic. Sounds like 2023 has been a really busy year and sounds like 2024 is going to continue to be extremely busy for you guys. Now, you just mentioned that. How is your roadmap to profitability coming and how do you plan to achieve this? 
Well, we look at if we can get an average acquisition rate of $50 US or lower based on our spending and ad spend and so forth on our metrics, it looks like by November, December, we will be net net profitable based on the blend of services we're selling. We counted on about, I think, uh, 10,000 direct users, 10, 11,000 and about 3,500 B2B. Now this enterprise rollout that we're doing, one of our biggest customers is America Movial. They've been waiting for this. Uh, the messenger has special tools that lets you create a private network of communication. So your employees cannot communicate with other secure messenger user. That's a feature that we're adding. And from Latin America alone, we expect over 2000 users. Then we have our overseas partnership and then we have partnerships in the US. So we feel these are targets that are achievable. Um, and you know, if we close one of these telecom operator, even if it takes a year, the numbers go way beyond the 10,000 users we're targeting. So I know a lot of our, uh, some shareholders, not a lot of them, some shareholders are there that are more publicly voicing on message boards, et cetera, the amount of users we have. The thing that you need to understand is that you have users that are kind of, they come in and out and you have more faithful user, more loyal user, like small businesses, et cetera. Our user base hasn't changed dramatically, but our average revenue per user and per customer has gone up and uh, we have basically reduced the churn. And that's because we're getting much better quality customer coming to us. So, from 4,500 customers right now, users all blended, to get to 10,000 is definitely a target that we feel could be achievable. Uh, so if we just meet our target and reduce that CAC to $50 or lower, we will meet that goal of profitability. And we're watching that very, very carefully for next year on a, on a weekly basis. Now, Alon, before we say goodbye, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? I know you were mentioning the F1. Yeah, so we do have an F1 on file. It's a public information that's out there. I've had people asking me about it. This is a great time for me to address that. We are completing, obviously, the process, <clears throat> but obviously market conditions are not favorable to a, to a proper uplisting. We are going to do it when the market conditions are appropriate and when the board decides that it's to the advantage of the shareholders to move up to a higher exchange. I, I don't see this happening for a couple quarters at least. Obviously, the market needs to turn around and that's up for speculation. But the idea is that eventually, yes, we will do it because it is better for the company to graduate to a senior exchange. And even if it takes a year, it takes a year, it's okay. We wanna build value. Uh, the share price needs to reflect the true value of the company, which it's not necessarily the case in these markets. So that's, that's my answer to that. Okay, great. Thank you for your time today. The CEO of Secure Private Data, CEO Alon Giai. And I must remind you that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence and do your research whenever you're looking to invest in companies that we are featuring. In saying that, we do believe this is a company that needs to be put on your radar and put on your watch list. Put the symbol in Canada, S-K-U-R, on your watch list. In America, S-W-I-S-F. And in Frankfurt, Germany, G-D-T-O. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Rich, from Rich TV Live and the Rich TV Live podcast, saying have a nice day. We'll see you soon.